Wasabi wallet. Unfairly private. A number of you may be users of the Kobo Vault, and you may have seen recently、uh, a number of tweets,、um, some blog posts, and some different posts around a new product called the Keystone Wallet that looks very, very similar, if not identical, to the Kobo Vault. You may be wondering. What the hell is the deal with that? What's going on? Is this a new company? Is it just a name change? What is happening there? And that is exactly what is going to be addressed in my interview today with Li Xin Lu, now of Keystone, formerly of Kobo and the Kobo Vault. We're going to detail exactly what has happened in terms of、uh, his relationship with Kobo, the company,、um, and the new project known as Keystone Wallet. What the different Differences and similarities between the Kobo Vault product and the Keystone Wallet now are、uh, what is happening with Kobo Vault moving forward, what is happening with Keystone moving forward, and、uh, basically all of the questions that I had regarding this as well. So hopefully, all of this interview will. Nicely sum up in a neat little package exactly what has gone on behind the scenes there,、uh, and I do have a Keystone wallet myself now, which I do plan on doing a full video on in the future. So keep eyes out for that.、Uh, but without further ado, here is my interview with Li Xin Lu of Keystone Wallet. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. If you are backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, you need to get your seed phrase in solid steel on the bill fodl. This helps insulate you against fire damage, water damage, or just accidentally throwing the damn thing out, as can commonly happen with a piece of paper if you're not careful. Bill fodl gives you that peace of mind, and you can store your seed phrase securely and safely. This is how I back up all of my important Bitcoin wallets. Check them out. Links are down below. If you are buying Bitcoin in Canada, and both security and ease of use are top of mind, then you have to check out Bitbuy. These guys have been around since 2016. They were the first in Canada to get a full proof of reserves audit. They're also the only company in Canada to offer full one-to-one -one Bitcoin insurance through their partners Knox Custody. These guys have a web interface and a convenient mobile app for both iOS and Android, so that you can stack Sats on the go. Click the link in the show notes below to check them out. And if you use that link after your first two hundred and fifty dollar purchase, they will give you twenty bucks for free. Ledin.io boasts a number of awesome Bitcoin services. Of course, they have their Bitcoin-backed loans, where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to get. Canadian or U.S. dollar loans into your bank account within 24 hours. They have Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts with interest rates of up to 11% annually paid monthly, and they have their B2X offering, which uses Bitcoin-backed loans to instantly buy you more Bitcoin. You can check them out in the links down below, and if you click that link and opt to use either their loan products, they will give you 25 bucks for free into your savings account. Whether you're living on Bitcoin like me or just exercising a little high time preference, an excellent place to do it is Bit Refill, where they have all of the gift cards you could possibly imagine, and you can pay with Bitcoin either on chain or via the Lightning Network. Again, I mean it, you guys. These guys have absolutely everything you could possibly imagine, and they're available in just. An insane number of countries. You really got to see it to believe it. Head over, it, check them out.、Uh, also, you earn Sats back as you shop, and they've got a killer referral program. Links are in the show notes. And now back to your regularly scheduled program.、Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you, man.、Uh, welcome back.、Uh, for those that are unfamiliar with who you are, would you like to、uh, introduce yourself and what you do? Okay, Ben. Thanks for having me first. Okay, so for your audiences, my name is Li Xingliu. Yeah, previously I was the head of hardware of Kobo, and I was leading the team to develop the hardware wallet Kobo Vault, and it's been covered by Ben for several times. 
not only the interoperability with Blue Wallet, Spiral, Spectre, but also multi-signature with other software wallets. And uh, uh, we have the team, the team and I, we have left Cobol and uh, started a new hardware wallet brand called Keystone. And uh, this product uh, takes almost all the legacy features from Cobol Vault, not only the BTC only firmware, but also the compatibility and the interoperability with other software wallets and also multi-signature. So almost the same, but we did some improvements on the product. So I'm happy to talk about the rebranding here. And also I'm happy to continuously serve the community with a very good hardware wallet, yes. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm really glad to have you. Obviously, there's been a lot of questions about, around um, the yeah. the rebrand, the new name, everything. So, yeah, I, I think a good way to start it is maybe because um, if if anybody's watching this that uh, hasn't tried the Kobo or hadn't seen any of the the old videos, you can go back and take a look at those. But um, what I I wanted to start with was maybe a little bit about what some of your goals were as you were, uh, you know, with the Kobo team and, and what you were trying to build there and, and, and kind of what you were able to accomplish there um, okay. before moving to Keystone. Okay, okay. So when we were at Kobo Vault, actually we set up several goals or several like missions we want to achieve. Uh, the first one is that we truly believe that the user experience of Bitcoin should be improved. That's the first thing. Because, because like 10, five years ago, Bitcoin is like a very geek thing and only the technical guys or developers can handle Bitcoin and can understand Bitcoin. And right now we are seeing the revolution like go through the whole world, even for things like El Salvador thing, right? So maybe in the next 10 years, billions of people will start using Bitcoin or like hodl Bitcoin for themselves. So this is the first to believe that uh, at the top of our head, which is the user experience must be highly improved for Bitcoin. So we feel like for like hardware wallets and for hardware wallets like other products, they have very tiny screens and also small buttons. It's not only about bad experience, it's also about it's very hard for you to verify the information on your hardware wallet. So this is the first thing. So then we come up with the idea that we should make a power wallet with big screen. This is very essential for user experience because the closer the user experience is to your mobile phone, the easier people can start using it. So it's very obvious. That's the first thing. The second thing is that I interviewed a lot of Bitcoiners uh, before we make the product. One important question I ask them is that, what's the most anxious moment when you feel if you're using a product like Ledger or Trezor? Actually, the, the, the answer was quite aligned. Everyone told me that the moment I plug into my laptop is the most anxious time when I'm using Ledger or Trezor. So I think, I think this is one improvement we really should make, which is we should make the hardware wallet as, so I, I admire Trezor's work, they open source everything. So for open source part, and they are doing very well. And after years of work for security part, Ledger is also doing very well. They have secure elements and we can learn this thing from them. But one big improvement we see is that we should like, we should stop the people's anxious when they're using Ledger or Trezor. We should make a hardware wallet as air gapped as possible. So mm -hmm. then that's we have the design for the QR code scanning and also micro SD card to transmit the, oh, for micro SD card, we learn from code card. I think they're also doing very, very well for that to create the 100% air gap experience. So, mm -hmm. and so we leverage the QR code too, to even make it, one step further for user experience. So this was our, our like main standing point for designing the product. And uh, yeah, again, I, I'm a product manager for hardware for almost a decade. So I, I really see things from a product wise, not from a marketing or something. So we really see the improvements that we should make, should bring to the community. And then it came out the couple of months. Yeah. 
Awesome. And so I've obviously I've used the Kobo Vault quite a bit. I've done a lot of multi-sig work, uh, work with it. I've tried pairing it with just a ton of different uh, third-party wallets as well, third-party software yeah. wallets. Um, so I've been using it for quite some time. A lot of people have been using it. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, kind of what happened to cause uh, the split and the, the new name um, yeah. Keystone, w- what happened behind the scenes to, to cause uh, you to break off on your own? And then also, okay. as you talk about that, maybe uh, let people know who is involved with the new product Keystone, like uh, from um, that was previously at Kobo, like who came along for the ride? Okay, okay. So uh, Kobo was set up in China back in, in the middle of 2017. So uh, first they built up Kobo based on the idea that uh, basically they have two assumptions. The first assumption is uh, Chinese people are not so against the centralized services. So lots of Chinese people and they don't, they don't they don't like the, the cumbersome of self-custody and also they're not willing to learn too much about the, the consensus or the basic knowledge about Bitcoin, but they want to make money. So this is the mindset of the, they are mostly like very uh, optimistic investors. So Chinese uh, Bitcoiners here, they're, they, they don't care too much about the, the basic knowledge or the fundamental logic of Bitcoin. So uh, based on this, and uh, also at that time, the two founders of Kobo, they see a big trend that a lot of Chinese people, they are entering this space. So they, their decision is they wanted to offer a centralized service for the, for the newcomers here in China. And uh, obviously for the newcomers, they are, if they are okay with centralized service, offer them with some user, user experience like uh, register your account with your email or with your mobile phone. This is the easiest way. So this is how they get started. And uh, right now, they're, the Kobo wallet is very big here in China. And uh, they offer they also offer like financial services for the Bitcoin owners to give them like 5% or 6, 6% annual return for if you deposit your Bitcoin into the wallet. So this is like the, uh, they're, uh, also a big chunk of uh, traders here in China, they use exchanges. And also there are some of the newcomers, they use the Kobo wallet as a very steady annual income, something like this. So Kobo wallet is very big now here in China and uh, it's almost like the Coinbase in the States right now. So okay. it's a huge company and they are making tons of money because it's easier to, it's much easier to make money with centralized services. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of 2017, after they established Kobo World for about half a year, uh, they, they feel that uh, they should offer a kind of like a full solution for the Bitcoiners here in China, which means because the two founders, they have strong back, background with the miners here in China. So for those miners, uh, some of them may want a solution for the hardware for, for self custody, which is hardware wallet. So they feel that uh, if we see Kobo as a big umbrella for a full uh, Bitcoin solution, and then they should not only offer centralized but decentralized services, which is Kobo Vault. Mm-hmm. So uh, they kind of uh, they incubated me as the. Uh, so we have a subordinate company here in China to make the Kobo Vault. And actually, I'm the CEO of the subordinate company. So they kind of incubated us as a separate team to, to develop and make the Kobo Vault. So everything is independent here for Kobo Vault. We have independent HR, independent finance. So everything is independent. They, they just invest money. And I was leading the team to develop the whole product. Okay. So, yeah, so, so the entire time it was quite, it, it was quite segregated. You were kind of, yeah. you were under their umbrella, but it was your own team. It was you guys yeah. all specifically yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. Actually for Kobo Ball team, we're in Shanghai, they're in Beijing. Also we're in different places. Oh, I didn't even yeah. realize that. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of separate from, from Kobo. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And uh, then it comes to, I think late 2020. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that was a bull market. They are making a lot of money. They are also raising a new new series of funds. And uh, at that time, they feel that uh, they they feel that. And also at that time, we uh, we also developed the second generation of Cobalt Vault in middle 2020. Mm -hmm. And our target market pivot from China market to Western market. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we bring down the price under 200 bucks for the first generation, it was quite expensive and you received that product before and mm -hmm. it's quite premium. And for the second generation, we kind of, um, we, we were welcomed by the Bitcoin community because we are doing very well on the air gapping and also about testing nature. And, but at that time, Cobalt's founder found that it's kind of uh, the linkage between Cobalt Vault and the Cobalt Wallet are broken because for Cobalt Vault, it's focused on Western market and for Cobalt Wallet, it's in China. And uh, they were thinking that uh, these two product lines should have some kind of synergy, for example, then it makes sense for offering a full solution for the users. So this is the first reason they were thinking about uh, like abandon couple vault. That's the first reason. The second reason is that they wanted to recruit us to work for Cobalt Wallet because they are having a huge goal for Cobalt Wallet and also uh, the company was shorthanded. So, and they, they thought that for Cobalt Vault team, we have very really strong execution power and they really like what we were delivering, even though that what we were still, we were delivering the stuff, but that was not that didn't have any synergy with Cobalt Wallet, but they are the Maya we have worked for. So they were trying to recruit us back to the Cobalt Wallet team and work for Cobalt Wallet. And uh, obviously this this was totally unacceptable for our team. So we refused their offer and then also, I personally, I bought out all the intellectual properties of Cobalt Vault, and then we left the Cobalt to create Keystone. So okay. this, this, this was the background story. Yeah. So effectively, like the, the goals of the, the Cobalt company and uh, the goals of your team in and around the Cobalt Vault, just, they just totally separated. Um, you yes. know, they were focused, yes. centralized, uh, you know, custody model, whereas you guys were... And, and you're right, it does align a lot more with kind of a, a, a Western look at Bitcoin, yeah. where it's like, yes. don't trust, verify, hold your yes. own keys, multi say yes. all of those things yes. that yes. that a lot of Western Bitcoiners hold dear, I guess, just didn't yes. line up with the, the model in China. Yes. And uh, another thing I want to emphasize is that uh, after this split off, I, I felt that the mindset of centralized service and the decentralized service are totally different. I can give an example. So when I was uh, when I went to Beijing to to demo the QR codes experience with them, with the with the managing team of Cobol, the first question they asked me is that, "Have you applied an, a patent for this QR code experience?" <laughs> so, <laughs> the exact opposite of the open yeah, source I, ethos I, I, yeah yeah I, I was totally speechless so i i didn't know how to answer this question so i want to use the, this example to 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 tell you that the, the mindset was totally different so i think the yeah. the speed off, even even though we have synergy between these products the speed off will happen sooner or later yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. So, so now um, you guys are, uh, have, have split off to your own brand. It's still all of the, like, did the whole team come with you to Keystone then? Yes. Yes. The whole team, the whole team is with me because that's awesome. Uh, because actually, actually the developing, the, the, the developers are really enjoy the open source work. They really mm -hmm. enjoy the collaboration between like, other developers and we can talk about technology with other people from all around the world. And uh, also Cobalt Vault was set into over 40 countries. It was very, uh, they feel very achievable for, for their work. So, and uh, they, they just follow me. And uh, they haven't worked for Cobalt Wallet before. If they work for Cobalt Wallet, it's a huge question mark for them. Yeah. 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 And they are not in Beijing either. So. Why, okay. why, why don't we just 
start doing the new brand and under our control. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So, so I guess um, one of the things that has come up and there's been blog posts that you guys have done about this, but um, I believe you guys uh, offered to the, the, the Kobo wallet team to, uh, to offer um, uh, what, like up, upgrade software and stuff into the old Kobo, but it, it it's not yeah. possible. And like what, what's yeah. going on there in terms of yeah. support for the old Kobo? Yeah, actually our original plan was that we want to offer a migration firmware for the Kobo vault devices. So after the migration, the Kubo Vault devices will be running the Keystone firmware because their software structure and hardware infrastructure, all this stuff are the same. So actually the uh, Kubo Vault can migrate to Keystone firmware and then they can install the following updates of the Keystone firmware. Actually, this was the original plan. Uh, but when we were we were sharing this to oh, oh, here. When, another thing I want to emphasize is that Cobalt Vault doesn't accept a third party firmware for security reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we design Cobalt Vault, we feel that if we allow Cobalt Vault to accept third party firmware, that is a big attack surface. Because if a newcomer, he asks a question on Telegram about Cobalt Vault, then a hacker may pretend them to be a official Cobalt guy and ask the, the newcomer to install a malicious third party firmware. So mm -hmm. we felt that that, is a, that was a huge attack surface. So when we were designing Cobalt Vault, we didn't allow third party firmware. So the firmware has to be signed by a specific key, specific key then the Cobalt Vault can recognize it's an official firmware release and then do the installation and everything. So we share the idea to offer the migration firmware to Cobalt, to Cobalt Wallet team, but uh, they refused for that proposal because the reason is that they, they, as I said, they have really like strong mindset for custodial service or centralized mm -hmm. service. They felt that for the users, users are Cobalt's assets. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the IP, uh, for the intellectual properties, I can sell that to Li Xin. But for the users, no matter how much you pay, I cannot sell them to you. I cannot sell them to you. Those are my assets. And yeah. also another reason is that there are lots of couple of users here in China. Mm -hmm. So actually they want to convert those users to Cobalt Wallet. They just oh. give them some like extra interest rate. For example, I give others 5%, I give you 8% for six months. Then you send your Bitcoins in your Cobalt Wallet to Cobalt Wallet, this kind of thing. So they were planning this kind of stuff. And then they refused to offer the help to sign the migration firmware. So then we cannot offer that. Yeah to all the users it was a huge yeah it's hurting it's hurting the community and yeah, uh, yeah. But it was nothing it was nothing on the part of your team like you were fully prepared to offer the migration firmware but kobo yeah. the company yeah. refused that to to make that possible for current kobo yeah. owners which is which is super unfortunate um now in that same vein uh, you guys are trying to do or do right by the people that um have a Cobalt Vault love what you guys did, myself included, and so you're you're extending an offer to uh, some people that currently have the Cobalt Vault that would like to migrate to Keystone. Yes, yes. If you like forward your order confirmation email, either it's a Amazon you ordered from Amazon or you ordered from our uh, e-commerce shop, you just forward the order confirmation email to support at Keystone which is our domain, K-E-Y-S-T dot one keystone. Forward your confirmation, uh, forward your order confirmation email to support at keystone one. And then we will share a 50% off coupon to you. So this okay. is the, the max we can we can do. And uh, yeah, we, we feel this is the right thing. Even though the cannot offering the migration firmware is definitely not our fault. Actually, we have made the firmware. Yeah. We had made the migration firmware and then the Kobo team refused to sign the firmware. So we cannot do yeah. anything then, that's, even though it's that's... not our fault. But 
I personally, I feel really sorry for the community. And that's why we're offering the discount for the community. Yeah. Yeah. And I do like, I, I do have the, the, the new one. I got it here. It came just the other oh. day. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, nice. to, to test it out. I will be doing a video, uh, on it in, in the Thank next, you. uh, week or two, but, um, but yeah, I'm very excited to, to get going on that. So let's, Let's talk about now that we've kind of gone through what what happened um, with with the splits and and the creation of Keystone. Let's talk mm-hmm. about Keystone itself and kind of yeah. Um, first of all, let's talk about um, this some of the the same features that were migrated from the original Kobo that are now also included in Keystone, and then mm-hmm. let's talk about some of the additional features that have been yeah. added to Keystone. So maybe if you would, yeah. you can. You know the product yeah. well. Yeah, I think the biggest change, maybe you can show the product to, mm-hmm. the, to the camera. The biggest change is that we move out the micro SD card. Yeah, this is the small slot. This is mm-hmm. the micro SD card. Uh, because we were receiving tons of complaints saying that the previous uh, micro SD card uh, hide it uh, behind the battery. It's not mm-hmm. easy to plug and play. And uh, because some people are using micro micro SD card to transit uh, huge PSBT transactions, Mm -hmm. which cannot be handled by QR code, even dynamic QR code. So they need need to plug the micro SD card very often. So, and then that's the reason we move out the micro SD card slot, which make the user experience better and uh, yeah. Again, we, we improve the product based on people's complaints. Yeah. Awesome. I, and, uh, I was excited to see that. I was, I was like, ah, oh, yes, yeah. and now upgrading I, I, and everything easier. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if, if we didn't make the change, we can ship it, I think, at least one and a half months earlier. But okay. we choose to make this change, even though someone was asking me that we need a device or something, but we still need to do the right thing. Even there is some kind of delay for the shipping. So mm-hmm. yeah, this, this is the first thing. The second thing, also a, a improvement on the micro SD card is that previously for Cobalt, it can only accept a uh, micro SD card with storage below 32 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of, I can, I can totally feel people's like uh, annoying. They, they, they like the product, they order the product and wait for like one or two weeks or maybe one week and then receive the product. And then they suddenly they realize that it can only accept the micro SD card below 32 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. Then they have to go back to a electronic store or they have to order another micro SD card on Amazon to use the Cobalt Vault. Then another like three or four or five days. So I can totally feel the, 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 the feelings of the users when they yeah. complaining this to me. So for this generation, we can accept micro SD card below 512 gigabytes. Okay, wow. Yeah. And uh, for this move, we also want to make the product more future-proof, which means that I can imagine that after maybe five years, maybe it's really hard for you to purchase a micro SD card below 32 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. So if we see, because, co- because for hardware wallets, it's not like a mobile phone. And maybe you use a hardware wallet three or five years. So when we design the product, we have to make it future-proof. This is very important. And this is also part of the main reasons why we improve the micro SD card experience. Yeah, that's the second thing. Uh, the third thing, there are also some other improvements. For example, we increase the QR code scanning speed. Yeah, I, I may share a video later as a comparison for these two products. Another thing we improved was the battery. We didn't, we didn't improve the battery capacity because that, that needs some big changes on the form factor. But we improved the anti-current surge capability because in some uh, countries, they have very unsteady uh, current and uh, that may damage our old model of battery. So we improved this. And uh, for, the, for the software-wise, we, we completely move our QR code standard to BCRUR 2.0, which is a more advanced and a more steady QR code protocol made by blockchain commons. So we moved to this new standard and also we pushed, uh, we, we pushed uh, Blue Wallet, Spectre and Spiral 
to the new standard. And uh, now almost everyone was aligned on a long-term maintained new standard for QR code. This is also, I think it's a good thing for the community, for the whole community, not only for one product, but for the whole community. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember seeing, I was looking through the, some of the GitHubs and everything. I think it was for Sparrow and a couple of the others. And they were talking about the standards for, for these yeah. air gapped QR codes and talking about upgrading. And I remember seeing uh, your team in there discussing um, upgrading yes. with them. So yeah, that, that was really cool to see. I'm super happy to see that, that rolled out. Um, maybe let's let's talk a little bit about compatibility because yeah um you know one thing that i really loved using kobo was um seeing support for it pop up for all of these different wallets and it seems like uh you guys are are really pushing to have more of the same with the keystone making sure mm-hmm. that it's compatible uh across the board where are you at with compatibility right now and um are there more wallets that you're you're working with in the future kind of where where are we sitting uh right now a a big news i'm not sure i can disclose this but yeah maybe i can see it right now we are integrating with casa oh that's awesome yeah so casa is coming and uh, also uh, I was also talking to Casa team. Maybe after the integration, we can ask some YouTubers like you to show the experience of Casa between Casa and the uh, Keystone. So yeah, actually, uh, actually funny enough, I was just talking with Nick from Casa, saying, "Oh, it's probably uh, time that I do a Casa multi yeah, video." So yeah, definitely, there yeah. we go. Okay, actually, actually, they have very. I think Jameson Lab was doing great. Uh, uh, especially they have a mechanism called health check. Mm-hmm. So they ask, uh, they, they, use, they ask their users to sign a message like every month or every other month to make sure that all the signers you're using are perfectly performing. Mm-hmm. So I think this is very, very important, not only for CASA users, but for all the Bitcoiners. If you're using self-custody system or schemes, if you don't touch your Bitcoin often, you should do like health check every month or every other month to make sure that everything is perfectly working. This is very important. And I really like the idea. And uh, I think this idea should be promoted not only to Casa users, but also to all the Bitcoiners. Even though you're not using multi-sig, you still need to do health check for your signer. Yeah, hundred percent. And and yeah. um, in terms of other compatibility, like Blue Wallet is uh, it, this thing's already Blue Wallet capable, correct? Uh, I think Blue Wallet is going to release their new version after they release their new version. You can work with. Right now, uh, Sparrow was released, yeah. and yeah. I think Spec Spectre will release within this week or maybe early next week. Uh, we awesome. have done all the development and the testing. We are just waiting for them to release the release the new version, and uh, also another thing is after Casa, we are going to integrate with Caravan, also oh, for oh AC. awesome, oh, yeah, I'll have so. to do another video on that too because I did do <laughs> Caravan a while back, um, and yeah. I remember you know at the time when I did my Caravan video, I think it was just Ledger and Trezor. Um, they've yeah. since integrated uh, Cold Card, and I was waiting on on on. Keystone. Keystone to to get in there, so yes. I'm excited to see that popping up. That's yes. great. That's good news. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and also we are interested in recently. I'm not sure you you've seen the wallet Moon Moon wallet. They are yeah, yeah they are very cool. Like M U U M U U. Yeah, uh, we're not talking to them. But just we're mm-hmm. not talking to them, but we're very interested with integration with uh... wallet. That would yeah, be cool because they're 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 doing something really really cool. We really really admire their work. Yeah, I just dropped a video about Moon, and I really they've they've got something unique going on there, and I like yeah. the idea. Like right now, it's it's by default it's it's Lightning because it's a single unified balance yes. that that can accept regular Bitcoin transactions as well. But it would be really cool if they had yes. a a like a a tab or a secondary place where it's like your vaults can be there and yeah, then yeah you know your hardware can yeah, be utilized yeah yeah but we, we haven't talked to them i'm personally i'm just the team was very 
very like they're excited when they see the wallet. And uh, yeah. if you know them, please yeah, me yeah. Them I'll, I'll put you guys in contact. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's. I I want to talk about. Um, open sourcing stuff because there was a yeah. really good blog post from you guys uh, called uh, on open source and transparency. And you guys kind of went through yes. um, what you're doing to be as transparent and, and as open source as, as possible with your product, yes. um, which funny enough, like you were saying, uh, dealing with the, the, um, the Kobo wallet team um, was, was kind of, where you guys diverged with ideologies. And so you guys have, have kind of been putting forth a, a, a solid effort to, to be as open source and, and uh, transparent as possible. So maybe can you talk about um, what you've done in that realm and, and where Keystone is at currently? Okay. Uh, actually for Keystone, for the openness and transparency, we just took all the legacy from Cobalt nothing has changed for open source and transparency and we open source everything we can do. Uh, first here, I want to share one idea about open source is that open source is just like security. There's no like absolute open source in this world. So when you're building something, uh, especially you're building hardware, uh, more or less you will face some kind of proprietary intellectual properties of others. And usually as those things are by the big companies, usually you cannot open source that part. So for me, I always share to the community that open source is like a spectrum. It's like a spectrum. It's not like, it's not a one or zero thing. It's a spectrum. So uh, for Trezor and Codecar, they are at the very end of the open source, but I, you, you cannot say they are totally open source. It's impossible, but they are to the very end of totally open source. Mm -hmm. And uh, for Ledger, they're like in the middle or middle goes to the that side a little bit because uh, they, they open source the app on, on the Ledger, uh, but for the secure element due to the proprietary intellectual property, they cannot do any open source on that. For us, we make one step further compared, but I should admit we're not as open source as uh, code card and a treasure. I cannot okay. deny that. We're not as open source as them. But com if we compare Keystone to Ledger, we make one step further, which is we open source the firmware of the secure elements. Okay. Can you, can you describe what that enables people to audit if you open source the, the secure element? Okay, cool. Good question. So actually for, for our secure element, the not open source part is uh, first is the random number generation. This is not open source. This is done by the secure element vendor. And, uh, but for this part, we allow people to generate their own recovery phrase by rolling dice or create their own 23 words. So this on open source part can be bypassed. Uh, the second uh, part that is not open source is the uh, cryptographic algorithms, those are not open source, but those are much easier to verify because you just give it input and check out the output, whether it's aligned with other realizations of other uh, algorithms, uh, cryptographic algorithms. For other stuff in the secure element, which is how we store the private key, how we do the key duration and how we receive message from the system and how we send the message to the core part of the requirement to do the signing, everything, key derivation, uh, key storage, and, uh, and other stuff. Yeah, for those parts, those parts are in the secure element firmware and those parts are open source. And those parts are done by us, so we can open source that. Awesome. So. I'm, and I'm just yeah. looking at the, the blog post here. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, you guys have, um, sorry, I'm just really quickly taking a peek here. So uh, you guys uh, um, have the, the software is open source. You've also released, um, I believe. Audit, uh, audit report, code yes. auditing report. Yeah. Yeah. This and was you all the first one. Yeah. 
and you also released a a uh, a, a, in regards to the actual hardware yeah schematics yes yeah schematics hardware design uh yeah and also the audit report so we we have released everything we can release Mm -hmm. but uh, i have to say there are some kind of like uh proper proprietary ip that we cannot do yeah yeah and also another thing is that uh right now we're trying to develop our next generation of pistol Mm -hmm. and uh, the biggest uh, thing we want to achieve for next generation is making open source one step further. So awesome. right now, the most part of the community is criticizing is that we're using Android and for that part is closed source. So for next generation, we have two routes. The first route is the first route is completely remove Android. So making something like uh, Spectre DIY, and mm-hmm. then we can fully open source that. That's the first option we are considering. The second option we are considering is moving to Graphene OS, which is also totally open source. And if we go to Graphene route, we can uh, we can leverage more of our current work because the Graphene OS can adapt to Android app APKs, so it's easier for us. Uh, so we're we're trying to do some early research on that, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I I cannot make any promise, but hopefully at the end of next year or the early uh, 2023, we can release the new generation of Keystone. Awesome. Now, uh, we, we've kind of gone through um, the the device and, and everything that it entails. Uh, I wanted to ask and uh, ask on one other topic in regards to, and this has come up a lot over the, the past year or so, um, is in regards to customer data retention. Um, okay. because you know, there's been, we've, we've seen the ledger hack and actually that's just making the, the rounds on the news yet again, because yeah, yeah. customers of ledger are now being mailed, uh, malicious <laughs> fake <laughs> products, yeah. um, fake to, devices. to fish them out of, um, fish them out of their money. So, so what is, is, uh, Keystone doing in regards to customer data retention by default to, to, are you guys doing something to help protect users in that, in that realm? Okay. Uh, right now the default is that after you place your order and, uh, after, 180 days, you place your order, we will delete your email, your address, and your phone number. Awesome. Yes. So uh, here, the 180 days is due to the like payment processor. So mm-hmm. uh, because there are sometimes there are kind of like dispute on the orders. And mm-hmm. usually for the payment pro- processor, they accept disputes within like 180 days. Okay. So after 180 days, then because we, we also received some scam scammers like place the order and the like, dispute, cancel the order, get refunded, but don't send back the product, this kind of thing. So yeah. they, this, this is only prevention for those scammers. And for those people, if you have no dispute of your order, after you receive the product, you just send us an email to support at one confirming that you don't have any dispute of the order, then we can delete your information immediately. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's so good. This and... is our like data, but yeah. Uh, some people are asking, why don't you delete everything right before they receive the receive product? So I just wanted to explain that mm-hmm. the order dispute is a huge problem, even, especially with those payment processors. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and one thing I would, since we're on the topic as well, one thing I would say to those that are ordering products and you're, you're worried about your own personal data. Um, it's a good practice to, if you're buying Bitcoin related products, you may want to consider having a PO box because if yes. you do that, then it protects your, your address from malicious third parties yes. in the event of any sort of data leakage. So um, it's, it is a good practice practice to have a PO box when you're ordering that kind yes. of stuff. Yes. If you if you don't have a PO box, uh, even just use your working working location is better yeah. than your home address. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. So mm-hmm. I, I guess I, I have um in, in kind of like wrapping everything up, I, I guess my my last kind of question to you is 
is what are you guys most focused on right now? Like what's, what's in your kind of in the forefront of your mind for Keystone okay. to kind of uh, build up obviously the, the, the new brand um, you guys are launched to the, the products are shipping. Um, so what's at the forefront of your mind? What are your immediate goals right now? Okay. So we can break that into like short term, mid term, long term. Mm -hmm. So in short term, the most important thing are still integrations for us in the short term, uh, because uh, we see ourselves as a. I, I usually I tell my team that we are making a cold blood signer, so we, we want to make the signer like compatible with all kinds of software wallets. No matter you are single sig, multi sig, you are mobile mobile wallet or you are a desktop wallet or anything, we just leverage the QR code of compatibility to be compatible with others. In short term, this is the most important thing. So Casa, Caravan, or even Moon Wallet, yeah, this is our short term goal. Uh, the mid term goal for us, which is really important, is we should support different languages. This is a big project because. For example, El Salvador, they speak Spanish, and also we're receiving lots of orders uh, from Portuguese speaking countries or even Japan. Yeah, or even some, yeah, also Germany is one of our biggest uh, like country. We have tons of supporters because Spectre was there. So Spectre really, really support us and a lot of German people like Cobalt or now the Keystone. So also for Germany, so in the mid in the in the midterm, uh, language support is the most important for us, and in the long run, we're also looking into the taproot, and also we're looking into new generation device development. These are the most important thing for our long term development. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. It it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> Lots of stuff on your plate. <laughs> um, but I I'm honestly very glad that rather than you know throwing in the towel and just going to work on like a, a, a custodial centralized solution with the Kobo wallet that you guys decided to move forward and keep the work that you've already done and build upon it um, even if it meant having to split off entirely on your own and create an entirely new brand um, I'm glad you guys are doing what you do and I think it's uh, it's very important to have lots of different options out of there and and um my kobo and now my keystone i'm sure will uh become very integral in in uh, especially uh i really enjoy using this with multi-six setups so um Alicia and I, I will say thank you very much for spending uh time with me to kind of go through everything that's that's been going on with you um is there yeah. any any resources anything you'd like to point people towards if they want to uh learn more outside of i will be doing a video of course uh in, yeah. in the coming weeks here yeah again my twitter is bitcoin leashing and the uh, dms are open if you have any suggestions yesterday i just received a very good suggestion i didn't think about i didn't thought about so people are asking me to use dice rolling to generate Shamir, Shamir recovery phrase. Oh, wow. So okay. right now we, we do Shamir recovery phrase only with our like random number generation. Mm -hmm. So one user just DM me asking that, why, we, why don't we make it more trusted? Mm -hmm. Can we use a, a dice rolling to create Shamir, Shamir secrets for my recovery phrase? Oh, I said, oh, that's an awesome idea. I, you're so clever. I didn't think about that before. So I immediately, I tell the team and they're also excited to, to make our product more trusted. So awesome. again, just if you have any like suggestions, uh, any complaints, you just ask me on, you know, uh, on Twitter. But if you have like other, uh, you, you need to get updates of the shipping information or something, you send email to the support at one, and uh, then we will try our best to uh, reply to you within 24 hours. Yeah, so um, awesome. again, I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to the community. I'm really thankful for the people who continue to support us. And uh, I feel very, very rewarded for making a product and also to continue offering the service to the community. Yeah.
And also, awesome. thank you, thank you so much, Ben. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for your time. Thanks for having. Yeah, me. no worries, man. I uh, really loved having you here. And of course, anybody watching everything that we talked about today, I will uh, try to load up all the links down below. If you're investigating, um, I'll leave the blog up, the website, uh, uh, Lishan's Twitter, all of that stuff will be down there. So be sure to check it out. And uh, again, thank you for spending the time with me. Thank you, Ben. Thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. If you are here on YouTube, please do hit like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really do help get this content in front of more eyeballs. If you want to help out the show in another way, you can head any of the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes down below. And if you really loved what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin Lightning Network tip at my strike tip page, which is strike.me slash btc sessions you can put in any amount hit the tip button and it will provide you with a qr code to send over a lightning network tip with that i am out have yourselves a wonderful day or evening wherever you may be and i'll see you guys next time for your daily session Huddle the bitcoin